Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Snowy, cold morning. Gonna go to the gym today, run on the treadmill. Pumped and excited about that. I don't know what you have going on today, but that's what I'm doing. So, good morning, Brenda. Good to see you today. Um, hope you're off to a good morning. Good morning, Lori. Um, it's Friday. Big Ten football starts tomorrow, so I'm excited about that personally. Um, I know my team is playing the Nebraska team, so that'll be a... I'm, I'm excited. Either way, I'm excited for this weekend. Um, we have something a little different happening on Sunday with us that I'm excited about. Um, going to talk with someone in our community that um, that works with uh, that works with immigrants that is an immigrant herself so I'm excited um, I'm excited to hear from her I met with her yesterday for an hour and 15 minutes and we um, just talked more about what Sunday was going to look like and I think it's going to be a good day um, I've loved doing this uh, doing this series about kingdom about God's kingdom over over the earthly kingdom. I don't know how you feel about it, but I love doing this series. Um, there have been things that have been really challenging about it, but it's been, um, like, it's been good for me. So, um, I hope it's been good for you. Uh, so good morning to Roseanne and Lori and Scott. Um, this morning we are going to read, uh, from Mark chapter four. Um, is where we are and like it's a it's a scene that we have if you have been in church uh, for more than five minutes you've heard this story probably a million times um, good morning Charlotte you've heard uh, mark chapter 4 verses 1 to 20 a million times and this morning I when I um, got up and came up here and sat in my kitchen and just uh, just wrote it down um, like it was just it was really um, even though I'm familiar with this story um, it was just really um, I don't know there's just something cool about sitting down with the Bible and reading it and something humbling about it and so I'm excited to share a story with you that I know you've heard before um, so this is Mark chapter 4, um, and my cat is about to hop up on the table, and she's going to walk in front of the screen. So stay over there. So we're going to read Mark chapter 4 today. Stay over there. We're going to read Mark chapter 4. We're going to begin at verse 1. Um, so if you have your Bible, I would encourage you to follow um, along with it. We do this on Sunday mornings at Westway. We want you to follow along in your Bible because we want you to see. We want you to see where we get the things that we get. Um, we want you to see that um, we're not making any of this up as we go. We're reading it from Scripture. So this is Mark chapter four, starting at verse one. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. Then he sat in the boat while all the people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen! A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath. And the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants that produced so that they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted, grew, 
and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Later, when Jesus was alone with the twelve disciples and with the others who were gathered around, they asked him what the parables meant. So I'm going to pause here for a second. So something we've talked about um, a lot over since we jumped into Mark. Um, something that we've talked about since we jumped into Mark is just because something is next in the story doesn't mean it's what happened next. So this is kind of this here in verse 10 um, we are kind of shifting gears a little bit. We're, we're actually moving ahead in time. So, so what happens in verse, um, what happens in verses, um, 11 to 20 happens later. And then on Monday, when we pick up at verse 21, it's going to go back to the scene, at, um, next to the lake. So I hope that makes sense to you. So Jesus is at the lake with his disciples. He's teaching. There's this later where Jesus explains it, and then in verse 21, it's going to come back to the lake. Okay, so there's, there's multiple little things happening here. Later, when Jesus was alone with his disciples, with the 12 disciples, and with the others who were gathering around, they asked him what the parables meant. He replied, you are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God, but I use parables for everything I say to outsiders so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, the disciples, later, If you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all of the other parables? The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed on the rocky path represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things, so no fruit is produced. And the seed that fell on the good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as been planted. So I said at the beginning of this, if you've been in church for more than five minutes, you've heard this story a thousand times. Um, and you've probably heard the explanation a thousand times. You've heard this, like, you've heard this sermon. What I'm about to say for the next couple minutes, you've heard it. And what I want to encourage you in is when you hear this again, um, don't check out. It's easy for us to check out. It would have been easy for me this morning when I started writing through this. And I, I did this a little bit at the end because I was running out of space. But it would be easy, like, for us to shortcut this story, right? Because we've heard it before. I've heard this story a million times, and it can be easy for me to fall into this place of, ah, I don't have to read this. I've heard it a million times. I could probably give this conversation right now. Um, I could have looked at the text and known exactly what I was going to say just by looking at it. I didn't have to write it down. And that is not what God is calling us to. One of the things that, as, I'm, as I was rereading re this again, for, I don't know, how many times I've read this story. When I hear the gospel... When that, when that seed has been planted, I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility. And frankly, so do you. 
when we hear the gospel, when we hear the good news of Jesus, when this seed is is planted, this God's word is planted in us, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to respond. Otherwise, we see this good news and we don't learn anything. Otherwise, we hear this good news and we don't understand it. And when we do those things, we will not seek forgiveness from God. That's what's going on here. That's what, that's what Jesus is talking about. When, he, when Jesus quotes, when he says, so that the scriptures may be fulfilled, he's quoting Isaiah um, 6 verses 9 to 10. And he's talking about a time where there are going to be people who are going to see, um, they're going to they're going to hear the gospel, they're going to see the gospel, they're going to be exposed to what um, to to what the Messiah is doing. They're going to be exposed to what Jesus is doing, and they are going to be like the first three seeds, and they are not going to be willing to put any effort into their relationship with God. It's going to be snatched away. The problems and persecutions are going to come. Or that message is going to be crowded out by all of the other things that are happening in the world around them. And I think each and every day, we have, we have the opportunity to decide which seed we are going to be that day. We have that opportunity. We have the opportunity to cultivate our heart to be ready to receive God's word that is being that is being planted in us. So I'm gonna flip ahead. I'm gonna find another text here real quick. I think it's in James. I have trouble finding this one sometimes. Here we go. Yeah, this is it. James 1. This is what I was thinking about. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has word planted in your hearts for it has the power to save you. So every morning when I wake up and like this is man this is just this is convicting. Like this morning sitting here reading my Bible just me in my kitchen, reading my Bible, no music, just the light, just me, just me and God. Am I going to humbly accept the word that God has planted in me today? Is that, how am I going to live my life today? How am I going to prepare my heart today? What am I going to do with my time and my energy today? Am I going to allow other things to come in and crowd out that seed that God has planted in me? Or am I going to prepare myself to, to, to accept God's word because it has the power to save me? And I don't know about you. I'm sure some of you are like farther. I know, I know, I know some of you are so much farther along in your journey and your relationship with Christ than me. And I like, I wish I was there. Um, but for me, like every day, every day is a battle. Every day for me, I have to decide, like I have to decide, am I going to prepare my heart to receive the seed that God is planting in me or am I not going to? And every day for me, that's a battle. And if it's not for you, man, God bless you. I love it. I, I want to attain your level of that's not a battle. But for me, it is. It's a constant battle to prepare my heart to receive the seed that God is planting in me. So that I can produce fruit. And that fruit starts with me. And I think right now, you know, we live in a time where we see what we want to see and we hear what we want to hear. 
And we talked about this last night in our in our in the small group that meets in our home. Um, sometimes I there, not sometimes there's a lot of times where I read the Bible and I just don't like what it says. And it's not about that. Like, I have to accept the seed that's been planted in me. So today, I, I guess my question for you today is how. How are you today prepared to receive the seed that God has planted in you? Because right now, like right now, for the last 17 minutes, um, God has been, God has been, cat, like this seed is cast is being cast out right now. That's why we do this every, every weekday morning. Um, this isn't just for your benefit, it's for mine. Every weekday morning, this seed is being cast out for us. And every day, every weekday, we have the opportunity to receive that seed. We have the opportunity to have hearts that receive that seed. And it's a daily choice. For me, it's a daily choice. It's a daily battle, and I hate it, and I wish it wasn't, but it is. I don't want to be a person that that sees what I should do and doesn't do it. I don't want to be a person that hears what I should do, that hears the gospel, that hears what God's message is for me. I don't want to be a person that hears that and then doesn't understand it. I don't want to be the person that knows that I need to repent of my sin and not do it. I don't want to be this person that willingly chooses to flee what God has for me. And there's a lot of times where I am. And today, just reading this, like it's so, it's just so convicting for me to read a story that I've read dozens of times before and I'm so familiar with and still be convicted by, by its reality. That each and every day, I have a choice, you have a choice, to have a heart that's open to what God wants us to be, to who God wants us to be, to live the way that God is calling us to live. We have that opportunity every single day to choose which soil we are going to be. So, your question for the day is what soil are you going to be? my question for the day. We should pray. God, um, thank you for thank you for your word. Thank you for stories that we've heard a hundred times before. Thank you that they that these stories only get old when we allow them to get old. These stories only lose their impact when we allow them to lose their impact. Um, I pray that I would not that I would not be so comfortable with your word that I refuse to obey it. I pray that I would not be so comfortable with your word that I would just um, go through it like it's some rote memory. I pray that I would be comfortable with your word so that I could be transformed by it. I pray that we would be so comfortable with your word that we would all be transformed by it. We would be changed by what your word says. I pray for the, um, for the hearts of those who are watching this right now. I pray for the hearts of those who are going to watch this later. That, that our hearts would be open to you. That we would not turn a blind eye or a deaf ear to what you are calling us to. But that we would desire, because of what you have done, to be obedient to your word and actually live lives of transformation. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today. Um, we're going to pick up on Monday morning at 7 a.m. in verse 21. As I encourage you each day, I would encourage you to read the rest of chapter 4. Read all of it. I don't know how far we're going to get. 
Mondays we usually read less, um, but um, read all of chapter four. Read the rest of chapter four uh, before Monday, and we'll talk about that Monday morning. Again, I'm excited to see you on Sunday. Um, we're doing something a little different on Sunday, uh, having a conversation with someone who has some insight into our topic about God, what God's kingdom looks like as a, a multicultural, multi-ethnic kingdom. So I encourage you to come and be a part of that. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a good day. I'm pumped and excited. So I love you guys, and I'm praying with you, and I'm praying for you, and I hope to see you on Sunday. Um, if not before, for some reason, um, and then Monday morning uh, here at 8 Mountain. So have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you over the weekend.